If a man is not faithful to his own individuality, he cannot be loyal to anything. This quote was by Festus Claudius McKay, better known as Claude McKay. He was born in 1889 to Thomas Francis McKay and Hannah Ann Elizabeth Edward, who were two lower-class farmers living in Sunnyvale, Jamaica. From a young age, McKay was heavily influenced by the English which the British people in Jamaica used. His older brother, who was a schoolteacher, significantly helped his picking up the English ideologies, but he was most heavily influenced by his British neighbor, Walter Jekyll. Jekyll became a strong mentor to McKay, and taught him with the old British romantics, of which McKay often mimicked in his own poetry. Jekyll eventually persuaded McKay to stop copying what he had seen the great writers of another culture do, and begin writing his own poetry of the Jamaican dialect. When McKay was a young man, he moved to work in the Jamaican capital of Kingston, which was an intense experience for him socially. Kingston held a predominantly white population, a social organization McKay had not experienced back in Sunnyville, whose population was mostly of black Jamaicans. With the large white population came a large amount of racism from whites in Kingston. However, McKay used his first encounter of racism as inspiration. He created a short poetry collection in 1912 called Songs of Jamaica, which actively showed his social challenges, and which was successful enough to support McKay on financing a trip to the United States. However, much more racial tension would await him in the United States, where blacks and whites were still not seen as equals. An example from McKay's Songs of Jamaica is the poem Africa. The sun sought thy dim bed and brought forth light. The sciences were sucklings at thy breast. When all the world was young in pregnant night, thy slaves toiled at thy monumental vest. Thou ancient treasure land, thou modern prize, new peoples marvel at thy pyramids. The years roll on, thy sphinx of riddle eyes watches the mad world with immobile lids. The Hebrews humbled them at Pharaoh's name, cradle of power, yet all things were in vain. Honor and glory, arrogance and fame, they went. The darkness swallowed thee again, thou art the harlot, now thy time is done, of all the mighty nations of the sun. After enrolling and finishing his studies at Kansas City University, McKay found an opportunity in New York City. Once again, he found racism, and once again, he was inspired by it. He wrote many poems and began to get them published, using a pseudonym to stay anonymous and to prevent prejudices toward his race. After crafting the poem, If We Must Die, which greatly hit the problems of race everywhere in the world, McKay traveled in order to expose his writing to a broader audience, in areas which the social orders were all different. He returned to the United States in 1921 and allowed inspiration to set over him once again. His collection, Harlem Shadows, represented his most notable works which were created during his time in New York. The Harlem Renaissance greatly helped his popularity in the United States and heavily influenced his writing. From his interactions with other poets and artists during the Renaissance, he learned a lot about social organization and used it to craft much more relative poems for the time period and society he was living in. His recognition of social order helped to make him a stronger poet as well as an individual. Poetry helped his persona in a way which many poets find as insightful, by using his harsh social interactions and turning them into something significant. I know the dark delight of being strange, the penalty of difference in the crowd, the loneliness of wisdom among fools. If we must die, oh, let us nobly die, so that our precious blood may not be shed in vain. Then even the monsters we defy shall be constrained to honor us through dead. Oh, I must keep my heart inviolate against the potent poison of your hate. McKay very heavily influenced the world as an individual, an aspect which he found very important as a writer. Being an individual sets him apart from anyone else and makes him a much more impactful artist in the time of the Harlem Renaissance.